you're safe. You are not. The Star Trek series, I'm sorry, can we just see that clip one more time? You think you're safe. You are not. That's so awesome. The Star Trek series has always had a special place in geek society's heart, and rightly so. Not only was it one of the first science fiction television shows on TV, but it also opened viewers' eyes to the possibility of other worlds that weren't immediately hostile to us, as many movies have betrayed off-world encounters before. The story of a ship and her crew exploring the galaxy opened imaginations for all generations, and as it outlived many people's expectations. It's been a long time coming, but finally, the new Star Trek is here. But does it live up to the high expectations of the original, or does it falter it under its own hefty ambitions? Find out in our review. With the release of Star Trek Into Darkness, J.J. Abrams is at the top of his game. The same mix of humor, heart, and science fiction of the original are alive and prospering, pun intended, in Into Darkness. We are introduced to James Harrison, played brilliantly by the very talented Benedict Cumberbatch, and Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise are tasked with bringing this terrorist to justice for crimes committed against the Federation. I request permission to go after him. What makes Into Darkness so fantastic is the way it portrays the villain of James Harrison. Not only do we learn throughout the course of the movie his motivations, but the chase to bring down this notorious adversary is as equally thrilling as we learn his true intentions. The first Star Trek gave us a sympathetic villain in Nero, someone who believed that his actions were justified after events in his life, and while we get more of the same here, Harrison is a much more fleshed out character and is portrayed perfectly by Benedict Cumberbatch. Shall we begin? Benedict comes out on the screen swinging. His presence is undoubtedly a force to be reckoned with and his scope as an actor is on full display here. I would even go so far as to say that his portrayal in this movie is one of the best cinema villains since Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight. He is completely menacing and terrifying yet manages a range of emotions that constantly make you question where his loyalties and morals lie. Benedict's commanding performance is one of the many highlights throughout the movie. I don't want to spend too much time on the story as the journey is what makes this movie so remarkable and so much more enjoyable. Into Darkness feels very much like the next logical step in the franchise and is a very personal story for Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise. The whole cast has fantastic on-screen chemistry and helps sell the believability of the crew as more than merely crew members and more of a family. The humor and the dialogue are delivered perfectly throughout and very organic. Even though Kirk and Spock are still very much the centerpiece of the movie, the rest of the crew, particularly Scotty, get some very welcome attention. While this film more than surpasses the action quotient of the original, the characters still get their much-deserved screen time and more than enough character possibilities to keep the franchise going. I will make you answer for what you did. The bar had been set very high with the release of the original movie in 2009, and luckily director Abrams is more than up to the challenge he unintentionally set for himself. The scope of this film is massive and deftly handled by his talented hands. The action is bigger, the space battles are massive, and future Earth feels like a living, breathing possibility, and I loved every minute of it. Abrams and his team should be commended for what they've accomplished here, and given the standing ovation it received at the screening I attended, all their work did not go unappreciated. I'm sorry. Now, Into Darkness was of course released in 3D, and it, this is one of the few times that the 3D actually adds to the experience. This is by far one of the best examples of 3D technology in recent memory. If you have the chance to see it on IMAX, I highly recommend it. Much of the movie was shot using IMAX cameras, and it shows. Now for all the things that I loved about this movie, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely did. There are some rather predictable and blatantly telegraphed plot points early on that kind of took away from the overall impact. But this is in no way sours the experience, and given the clever way that most of them were integrated, we as fans can naturally take them in stride. This movie manages to not only meet the high bar set by the original, but in most ways surpass it. I very highly recommend seeing this one on the big screen. It's not very often we get the movie that manages to be as intelligent and thoroughly as enjoyable as this. Well, we'll have to wait to see where the franchise goes without Abrams' leadership, but that's a concern for another day.